but welcome everyone. <laughs> Just a quick little introduction. Ms. Emma, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, please? Sure. I am Emma Roberts. I am the social media and influencer manager here at Jane Iredale. I have been with the brand in various capacities for about eight years, which is insane to me. Um, but I am so excited to uh, do some cream, blush, bronzer, and highlighter sticks because that's my thing. So, that's your jam. That's your jam. That's your thing. All right. <laughs> All right, everyone. Hello, my name is Michelle Turner, and I'm the global makeup artist and educator here at Jane. A little bit about myself. Um, I've been a pro makeup artist for 27 years, still an active working artist, and I also have been with Jane for eight years as well. So I just celebrated my anniversary the same weekend of my birthday. Go figure in May. Um, so I, I am so happy, so happy that you all are here. And with that being said, let's get into it. We have a quick little agenda. I promise we're going to get into the fun stuff, but we have to, you know, we kind of have to talk about some things before we get into the demo, before we get our hands in it. So class objectives today, why glow time sticks? Glow time ethereals review. If you're not familiar with that, that's uh, something magical that we launched last summer that did really, really amazing. We all fell in love there. And now we have our glow time eternals. We're going to do a demo. And we also have some pre-populated questions. However, if you have any questions at all, I'm sure you've all located your chat box and your Q&A box. Please use it. Don't leave Em and I up here by ourselves. We want some engagement. We, will, we want some things going. We, we want to know tips and techniques. Maybe there's something that you're doing that we're not, but please share. Okay. Ready, Miss Emma? Yes, let's go. All right. So why glow time sticks? First and foremost, who doesn't love a multitasking product, right? We are all busy. We are almost short on time. Most of us are still working from home a good portion of the time. So we need something quick, easy, and fast. We also may need something that's on the go, that's user-friendly. You may be like you're out and about. You're like, oh, let me pop a little color on. Maybe you've just gotten a facial from your local spa or esthetician, and you just want to kind of bring your face back to life amazing with these glow time sticks. Quick, easy application you can use, and you'll see with the demo, I'm actually going to be using my fingers, although we sell brushes and not fingers, and was going to be using brushes as our tools of choice. So again, multitasking, versatile, quick, easy application, and also we cannot forget, we would not have this product in our line of our, in our line without skin-loving ingredients. Remember, our whole entire brand is built on those skin-loving ingredients. High-performance makeup, but also skin-loving ingredients as well. All right, just a quick review. Glow Time Blush and Highlighter Sticks. This is our ethereal collection that we actually launched last summer, and it did so well for us. But, you know, again, it kind of morphed into the Eternals. These are still very present, I'm happy to say. So have no fear if you are a true fan of this. Flat, five beautiful blush shades and three highlighting shades that complement all skin tones, all depths of skins, all undertones. But the difference is these have shimmer. The new Eternals do not. So if you are not a fan of the shimmer, listen, you know, we, we heard you, we listened and we executed. That's what we do here, right? That's what we do. That's what we're known for. So we have, again, just a reminder, we have that glorious, we have aura, we have enchanted, we have ethereal, we have mist. And for our highlighting shades, we have eclipse, solstice, and cosmos. With that being said, welcome to the world of Glow Time Eternal. I always want to say, woohoo, after I play this video. <laughs> I absolutely love, love, love. So let's take a closer look. Glow Time Blush Sticks, creamy, rich, glowing shades, no shimmer. 
So for those of you that were they were not you were not a fan of the shimmer, we now have something for you. Five new on trend shades, 10 glow time blush stick shades total. And I have to say I was I was a part of the team that actually brought these into fruition with product development. So this is a little bit of my baby too. So I'm so excited to be presenting these and I hope you enjoy these shades because we worked hard on these. Blush features and benefits, just as the ethereal collection did for us, multitasking for cheeks, lips, body, it creates that beautiful natural radiant blush as opposed to the ethereals that kind of created that beautiful lit from within. This is gonna bring the heat, I guess. Buildable, blendable color payoff, ideal for that on-the-go application or touch-ups, creamy formula for natural streak-free application. I love the fact that someone brought up the old in touch formula, which was a beautiful formula, don't get me wrong. However, what I noticed that about the in touch was I had to kind of work it into the skin a little bit more to bring some intensity and also to kind of just give that even blend. With the new glow time sticks, even the ethereals, it's the same thing. It's that on the go, easy application that literally glides onto the skin. We also have that jojoba seed oil, which we'll talk about in just a second. Again, if you're raising your hand, um, there's I can't do anything with the hand raise. However, if you use your chat box or your Q and A box, we can do we can manage that. We can look at that. We can answer that for you. So the new shades, Ember, which is one of my absolute favorites. It's a bright raspberry. We have Smolder, which is a gorgeous, warm nude rose. I'm hoping that we kind of launch a lipstick in this shade pretty soon because this is a beautiful, beautiful lip color. Afterglow, which is that beautiful, bright coral pink. Balmy, which is like, we can't keep it in the warehouse. This is like now our number one seller already, right? It's that beautiful berry rose. And Fervor, which is that beautiful bubblegum pink. Now, Fervor, don't let that description sway you. Because even though it says bubblegum pink, I want everyone to know that, again, these are modern, beautiful shades that complement skin tones. So even if you think that, oh my goodness, it's going to be too, too pink, give it a try. I, I, you may be surprised, all right? In addition to those beautiful blush shades, we now have our Glow Time Bronzer Stick. So we're getting away from that really hard contour. We're doing more of a sculpting kind of look, and these are ideal to do that. We have three non-shimmer shades for all skin tones, all depths of skin. And what I love about this particular formula and the shade range is typically, if you know anything about contouring, we would use something that's really, really more cool based, as opposed to when you're using something that's for bronzing, it's really warm, it, it can have a, a bit of orange in it, maybe a bit of red, kind of that bricky feel to bring really that warmth. Somehow, some way, through the genius of our product development team, we were able to produce something that's the both of best worlds. So you can not only do that soft sculpting, but you can also bring a little bit of bronze, a little color to the skin as well, just with one product. Features and benefits, again, just like our Glow Time Eternals, uh, blush sticks and ethereals, multitasking. Great to, keep, uh, to create that natural sun kiss finish, you can do that sculpting. We'll talk about that in just a second. On the go application, we all want that. And I know more and more, I was doing a little bit of research about you know, using products that are in stick form, but what I've come to realize is more and more consumers are seeking and searching out for things that are quick and easy and on the go that they can literally do in the car, right? We don't want you doing your makeup in the car, especially if you're on the Bay Bridge behind me. I do not want you doing your makeup. However, it, it happens, right? So again, an easy way to add and bring your face back to life with these amazing on-the-go applications. Shade range. We have, again, those three inclusive shades. We have Sizzle, which is going to be great for those light to medium skin tones. We have Scorch, that's fantastic for medium to dark. Blaze, which is my favorite for dark to deep skin tones. So there is one for everyone. And key ingredients, let's look at the ingredients because we do get a lot of questions, especially when you are dealing with an acne skin or you have oily skin or you have dry skin, whatever the case may be, ingredients, super, super important, or even like a highly reactive skin. 
So first and foremost, we have that jojoba seed oil. Interesting thing about jojoba seed oil, this may sound a little nerdy, but I don't care. I'm going to give you this information anyways. Jojoba seed oil is actually the closest thing to our natural sebum in our skin. So non-comedogenic, water-soluble. So here it acts as that really that 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 mechanism for blending and it gives that skin that really really beautiful youthful appearance so it, it helps with that radiance vegan saracen wax so yes this product is vegan so if that is a concern of yours go for it we have many shades right not only does it add that stability but it also has a very high melting point so i know emma you mentioned that it's still very hot where you are in new york this decreases the likelihood of breakage okay coconut oil derived emollient that gives that that slip and glide and again non-communogenic so if you do have an acne prone skin no worries i have extremely oily skin and i will tell you there's no sliding there's no moving when i put it on it stays on okay any questions or any concerns or anything you want to share with the group please let us know we will be happy to address it. No? Yes, we did get one comment, um, which I answered while you were um, sharing, but I love it, so I'm gonna share. Okay. Uh, Laura said, I saw the new bronzer and blush blushes at my local store, absolutely gorgeous. Oh, Love's fantastic, fantastic. Alrighty, they so now- In the wild. In the wild. So now this is where it gets really fun for both of us. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to stop my share. And I'm going to, Emma, are, are you seeing us on a split screen? I want to make sure yes. that doesn't happen. Okay, fantastic. So I can't see myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Give me one second. Okay, here we are. Now I can see myself. Oh. All right, to madame. So I have on a little cheek color from earlier because I've been in Zooms all day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, before we get started, I'm going to actually take my pomace and I'm going to refresh because I need a good refresh. Okay, Do it up. Do it up. Okay. All right. So we have that taken care of and we have that done. Now, I'm sure that everyone has seen this new like facelift in a tube, <laughs> in a stick, right? This trend is everywhere. It's around TikTok, it's on IG, it's on Facebook, it's on Pinterest, it's on everywhere. So Emma and I are actually going to execute that, but in two different ways. Emma's gonna use a tool, I'm gonna use my fingers because I really want everyone to see how quick and easy it is to use this on the go, even if you have to use your fingers, all right? So first thing we want to do, are you ready, Ms. Emma? I know. I, I also just wanted to share that Michelle is doing it from a professional standpoint, and I'm doing it from a layman's standpoint. So if you tend to make mistakes with contouring like I do, I'll make them for you, and then <laughs> Michelle will correct me so that you can do it the proper way yourself. A fantastic. So we are going to take three different things. We're going to take our, our sculpting sticks, our bronzing sticks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll be using Blaze today. And what will you be using? I'm going to use Sizzle. Okay. And then we also, we're going to bring back the ethereals. So we're going to bring an ethereal in the mix. I am actually going to use Eclipse, which is that beautiful gold shade. What are you going to use? Cosmos, my favorite one. Okay, fantastic. And then my blush shade of choice will be Afterglow. Mm. Okay, I'm going to use the number one bestseller, Balmy. Okay, fantastic. So we want to start first with our bronzer sticks. Okay. So again, I mentioned earlier, we're getting away from that really heavy contour, right? So in rather than working in the hollows of the cheeks, we're going to actually work on top of the cheekbones. Are you okay. ready? Yeah, right, so, so I'm going to have some on my brush. Okay, and I'm just going to do a stripe here. And I'm going to do a stripe here. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, don't blend it in. Don't do anything. Okay. Just leave it. And then we're going to take our blush shade. So again, I'm going to take Aftergo and I'm going to put it okay. right on top of that. I'm going to butt it right against oh, it. So now that just like we have when... some lines. I was, I was only ready on one side. Okay. All right. Got it? Yes. Already you're like adding that dimension in the face. I absolutely love it. Sculpt okay. it. Sculpt it, lady. Sculpt, Sculpt it. it. All right. Let me do the blush. Okay, fantastic. Okay, okay. all right. 
All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our highlighting shade and we're actually going to put that right on top of the blush shade. So That's, now we have <laughs> three stripes. so pretty. Right? So while you are doing that, okay, let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your blending contour brush and you're going to, in circular motions, blend all three shades together. Perfect. While I am going to take my fingers and I'm going to tap it in. So I do want to just say as we're blending here, yes. that Michelle and I in talking about this before we started, I said I'm very intimidated by contouring and bronzer sticks because I'm a fair skin type. I'm a little tan right now, but I'm fair skin type and they always come out really intense on me. So that's why I'm using a brush. I'm usually a finger gal, but the brush, I think, and you shall correct me if I'm wrong, but it gives a little bit more of a subtle and more blended appearance. Yeah, right? the, the brush actually blends it out for you a bit better. So what you'll do is you'll get a sheer application and that'll give you some grace if you want to yes. you want to add. Remember, it's always, if you've been with me before, you know my thing, it's always easier to add than to take away. Mm -hmm. So you can build, 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 build until your little heart's desires with your brush because that's going to help blend it out for you. Yes. Okay. Teresa asked what brush I'm using. This is called the blending contouring brush. It's my favorite. I use it for, gosh, I think everything except no, everything. <laughs> Foundation, bronzer, conceal. I do concealer. Yeah. Yep. And blush. My yes. favorite for blush though. And if you've played with our new glow time pro, the blending contour brush is absolutely magical with that formula. Mm -hmm. I actually am wearing that underneath and I applied it before with I have three, but <laughs> my third blending contour brush. Love, love, love. And is yes. there another question? There, it, there are two more. So one we'll be answering later. So I'm going to say that we're going to answer that live, which is, does the blush go on top of powder? Yes. But Michelle will go into that later. And then Colleen, please tell me about that facelift in a bottle that everyone is talking about. Miss that, Michelle, that's you. Okay, so essentially, it's actually not called a facelift in a bottle. It's called, <laughs> it's a facelift in a stick. So the notion behind it is to, just to kind of lift the features by using products in stick form. So rather than, than doing that really heavy contour that we've been seeing for the last few years, what we're doing is we're actually working, instead of working here in the hollows, we're working up higher. So what you do is you get this nice little subtle lift. Okay, does that make sense? So when you marry all three shades, including the highlighting shades, you're actually doing everything at once. So you're doing that soft sculpting, which is gonna kind of slim and add a little bit of dimension. Your, that pop of color is going to bring forth color, obviously. And the highlighting is what gives you that ultimate lift. Okay. Yeah. So that looks great. You did a great job. Thank you. I added a little more while you were talking. I think the other thing that I've learned just being in the Jane Iredell world for a while is to blend up too. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I've seen people and they kind of, especially with their finger, fingers, they'll go like this. Yeah. That brings everything down. Everything comes like, down. So yeah. We want to lift up. Yeah. And if you do decide that, you know, that maybe you do want to kind of stick with that, you know, the, the traditional contour, even with that, if you're going to do that, what you'll do is you'll start here and then you'll still work your way up. So mm -hmm. either way, everything needs to go up because we want everything nice and lifted. Yes. Okay. Colleen says, thank you. You're welcome. Um, okay. Erica is asking. Uh, what other places do you recommend applying the contour shades? That's a great question. Um, absolutely, you can do, and this is something we're, we can talk a little bit about in the Q&A, but I can handle it now. It's no okay. problem. So if you're wanting to kind of add a little bit more dimension or bring a little bit more balance in your face, so just say like, I have, I have kind of a wide forehead, you know, I like to bring it in a little bit. So what I can do is if I want to just kind of uh, decrease the width of my forehead, and that sounds really funny, <laughs> I can actually take this on the sides and work it here and just bring and it I, in. Okay. I feel like I have a, a tall forehead. Can I do the same, but on the top? You can do it on the top. And then what you would do is you would put a little bit on your, your chin. 
Oh, here. okay. So Why do you have to do it? Oh, you smush it. Okay. Yeah, so. you're, 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 yeah, you're, you're smushing. Like, it. You're, yeah, you're smushing your face in with that. Is <laughs> well, maybe not you, the visual that we were going for there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Another way that you can use these sticks, and I know that summer is leaving us, and everyone is sad because you've probably developed some really beautiful color. Mm -hmm. Anywhere where the sun is, just like you would a powder bronzer, anywhere the sun is going to hit, you know, that's where you want to work it. So for across the forehead, bridge of the nose, just right the tip of the nose, the chin. So again, it's multitasking. It depends on what you're trying to accomplish. The shades, you can actually use these on the eyes too. So if you wanted to, you know, use it like as a little bit of a dark brown smoky eyeshadow you absolutely can do that too. okay that was actually laura's question she said can these products be put on the eyes yes. yes i okay i really like to put my blush just a wash of it on my eyes because i feel like it kind of brings everything yes. together yes and i also i know we're going to talk about this so maybe this is a good transition but i like to do the same if it's a cream like this and i love creams then i put it on my lips too and i get kind of this monochrome look and everything just looks so pulled together Wait, that's my next point. Right now, the trend is monochromatic looks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, it's one thing to be on trend and it's another thing to be trendy. I feel like being on trend is just looking pulled together, looking very modern, looking very fresh. Trendy are things that kind of go in and out, in and out, in and out. Monochromatic looks have been forever around, at, at least in my 27 years of doing artistry, there's always been some sort of monochromatic feature, whether it's on the runways, magazines, or even just in everyday life. Because I remember driving in the car, watching my mom put her cherries in the snow on her cheeks and her eyes. <laughs> oh, yeah, too. So she, like if I'm, if I don't pack properly for a vacation, I'll just take my lip balm and I'll just go everywhere. Exactly. So monochromatics, that is just, it's just something that keeps resurging. So yeah. this is ideal for that as well. I love it. What do you put it on your lips? Balmy. I see. So I'm pretty. demonstrating the monochromatic look. I love it. You look gorgeous. Thank you. you so too. pretty. So, so, so pretty. So do we have any questions about application? Um, but we, we will answer some more trust yes. me, about application and placement in just a second, but, um, ingredients, any other questions, please let us know. If not, we will move to our pre-populated questions and it may like kind of move you to ask another question. Yeah. So we do have a question, um, just before we go to the kind of pre-shared questions, mm -hmm. um, Jennifer asks, does the blush go on top of powder? Yes. So just so you know, I had on peer press base. Mm -hmm. So there's no rolling. Remember, all of our powder products have been finely milled. So there's no spread of any rolling or any creeping or creasing or, or and thank goodness to those amazing ingredients. Also with the Glow Time 6, they just glide even on top of powder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's and, no thing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you can also, don't forget, use them in conjunction with powder blushes. I think that was one of the questions um, that's coming up next in the pre-populated questions. But just as an FYI, you can use them to anchor powder blushes as well to bring in even more intensity, just with our new formula of blush, our pure press blush. My goodness. Yeah. And that alone is super creamy. But if you put it on top of this, winner, winner. Also, it stays on all day if you do that too. And I'm someone who will work like this. Oh. <laughs> so if I do, <laughs> truly, like I'll just be like, Oh my God. So if I, then I'm like, why do I have acne on my cheeks? I can't figure it out. But I will do the cream blush and then I'll top it with powder, whether it's, um, I love the bronzers with the four shades in them. Yes. Or yes, just yes. pure press blush. And it just stays on even when I'm like, you know. Even when you're smushing your face. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So, um, Stephanie has questions about other Jane Iredale products. So why don't we go to the pre-asked questions that people submitted okay. about the sticks and then we'll, uh, uh, and then Stephanie, feel free to write in, uh, your question about other products of ours and we'll answer those afterwards. Fantastic. So we have done our demo. I hope that you all enjoyed the demo. I did. I feel, I feel pretty. I feel refreshed. Same. I've been on Zooms all day, so I feel nice and refreshed. All right. So what is the best way to apply blush? So you saw it here. Emma used her fingers. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I use my fingers. Emma used a brush. So either way. Now, if you're working with a powder 
blush, I always recommend getting the blending contour brush, the dome brush, or the fan brush. If mm -hmm. you are very, very unsure about blush placement, I would say get yourself a fan brush. A fan brush will always allow you to make a mistake, right? Mm -hmm. Because it goes on so light, so pretty, just, you know, it, it gives you some grace. When you use things that are um, like the blending contour brush or the dome brush, those have a lot of fiber, right? So that's going to pick up a lot of product. So again, if you're kind of still figuring out, you know, face shape where you want to put your blush, get yourself a fan brush that will allow you to build. Yeah. Um, as far as placement is concerned. Oh, go ahead. Don. No, no. I was just going to say, I love the white fan brush because I don't love a lot of color. Mm -hmm. And I'm also, again, like I have a little color right now because of the summer, but usually I'm quite pale. Um, so I love the white fan brush because as you said, you can build it. You don't have to worry about kind of going in and being like, oh shoot, I put too much on and having mm -hmm. to try to erase it. You mm -hmm. just can build it and it blends beautifully. Exactly. Um, now, yeah. as far as placement of blush is concerned, because I know that's a big question for most people, I, it wasn't for whatever reason, it didn't pop up here. And I forgive me if I did miss it. Now, remember where you apply is always going to add a little volume. Okay. So if you are, if you have a rounder face or a fuller face, you want to make sure that you stay away from the apples of your cheeks because that's going to add volume. Okay. So you're always going to work further back and higher above. Now, if you have a very, very thin or petite face, that's when you want to bring in a little volume. So working with the apples of the cheeks, fantastic. Okay. Um, did you want to add anything, Emma? I actually didn't know that about round faces. Oh, okay. Well, now I just you thought it, now I do. I always learn something when I do different things with you. I love it. Do these sticks have SPF? No, but remember, you can always pair with your favorite Jane complexion product that contain SPF. We have our Dream Tint. We have Little our Glow Time Pro. Pro. We have our Amazing Base. We have our Pure Press Base. Hey, we even have our Powder Me SPF. Yep. <laughs> you, know, like, you, know, you name it, we have it. Mm -hmm. um, how do I contour and highlight for my face shape? Again, you have to be cognizant of what you really want to bring forth. So this is something that I share with my friends, my family, and my clients. If you highlight something, you had better like it, right? <laughs> because I, I say that constantly because I see all these, um, these videos and these YouTube things where the person continuously works on, they work on themselves. So th there's not much range there. So mm -hmm. when you try and duplicate that, it's like you don't, you're not mindful of that this person's face shape is completely opposite of my own. So remember, highlighting is bringing forth. And typically, we highlight the bonier areas of the face, tops of the cheeks, bridge of the nose, center of the forehead, center of the chin, cupid's bow, okay? When we contour, remember, that's decreasing volume. So if you have a really, really tiny, petite face, you're probably going to want to do more highlighting than contouring because what will happen is you'll start to shrink your features and you already have this really beautiful petite face. So if you have a fuller face, you want to decrease. So you want to work on your cheekbones, maybe here around the jawline. You saw earlier I did my forehead. So decreasing when you're contouring, highlighting is going to bring forth. Okay. Is this safe for acne prone skin? Again, that beautiful jojoba seed oil is the closest thing to our own sebum, our own natural sebum. So no problems there. All of our products are non-communogenic, allergy tested, dermatologist tested. So no problem, no worries there. Can I pair these with powder products? I think proof was in the pudding when I put it right on top of my pure press base. And that was a great question that was asked earlier. Okay, now, let us know if we missed anything or if you have additional questions that we can answer specifically about these products first, and then we can go into some other details of some other products if you choose. Oh, I love this. Okay. Teresa asked, Michelle, may I ask which foundation do you use to get that smooth, flawless look? Yes. So first and foremost, if you have not tried our mattifying primer, <laughs> Oh my gosh. So I use the mattifying primer, which is hot off the press. If you have not tried it and you have oily skin or normal to oily skin, please get it as soon as you can, right? Um, and then I tend to use, I'll use a couple of things. I'll use Dream Tint in dark, and then I put my Pure Press base on. Um, today, I just decided to just not do all that. So I did my primer 
I did my Circle Delete Concealer, and then I did my Pure Press Face in warm brown all over my face. That's how I got my look. But I'm telling you that mattifying primer is life. So yeah. <laughs> I will say if you, if you follow us on Instagram or Facebook too, you can scroll down in our, in our profile a bit and you'll see, uh, we shared one of our partners. She did a split face, no mm -hmm. makeup, just the primer. And you can see shine on one side and no shine on the other. And that's after, I don't know, five seconds after it dried down. So, and, and I will say for me too, I think that I have kind of dry to normal skin, mm -hmm. but living in a humid place like New York city. And if you live in the South, man oh man I don't care what kind of skin you have I feel like you're gonna want this primer yeah um because you know with the humidity I feel like even if you're dry you look shiny um yeah. so it's a great it's a great product that's also another reason why and I know we're totally like going off the rails with what we're talking to but you asked I'm, I'm gonna give you the information um with the mattifying primer it's really about the finish so not so even if you have a drier skin it won't make your skin feel tight but it will give you that beautiful soft smooth finish, especially if you're dealing with a lot of humidity right now. Me, I don't have to deal with humidity. My skin is just oily. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any other questions? We do have a few. I want to just also, um, Stephanie asked if she could ask about other products. So now's the time, okay. Stephanie, if you would like to do that. Um, in the meantime, as she's writing in, Julie asked uh, for recommendations for older skin. Uh, she's mid 60s. Is powder or cream better or both? We Because our powders do not contain talc, you're still going to get a beautiful skin-like finish. Mm -hmm. So you can pair them together. Um, we have our amazing liquid minerals, which if you've not seen, it looks, it looks like this. And it actually is a serum foundation. So it's going to be more of a dewy finish. It also has some firming benefits as well. It's a sheer coverage, which is great for an aging skin. I like to pair it with Amazing Base if I'm working on a client with that concern because Amazing Base, which is our loose mineral powder, actually brings luminosity forth. So it's a more luminous finish and always make sure you finish up with your hydration spray. Mm -hmm. But the magic really, really happens also if you begin with our Smooth Affair Brightening Primer, another amazing product for an aging skin or anyone that's concerned with dryness to the skin. That's going to anchor all of anything that you put on top, but it also is going to give you that boost of hydration. So the products I just named, Smooth Affair Brightening Primer, okay? Liquid Minerals, which is going to be your foundation. Amazing Base is going to finish you off. And you have your hydration spray. So your choices are D2O, Calming Lavender, or your Palm Mist. Whatever strikes your fancy, all of three are great for a drier skin. Yes, totally agree. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, okay. Two questions. One is from E London. Can the blush stick, if purchased in a warmer shade, be used as a bronzer as well? You know, I would say that you can use it anywhere. I know that there's this trend of like this, um, this like uh, kind of like a sunburn kind of look. So if that's the look that you're going for, I would definitely do something like Afterglow or Ember. You can absolutely do that with those two shades. Yeah. Yeah, I think, because um, I've done it before um, mm -hmm. to get more of like that kind of draped mm -hmm. look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it totally works. It's just, you know, definitely more rosy than like a yeah. bronzer stick. Yeah, it's beautiful. And you, you take it across the nose, apples mm -hmm. of the cheeks, a look, and around the forehead. So I would, I would stick either with Afterglow or Ember. It's, it's a beautiful look. I, I've seen it all over. It's, it's really, really um, hot off the press as well. Yeah. Okay, Stephanie said, but what if my face is not oily? Uh, what primer is better? She said she went last week to determine the best color. Um, I was doing foundation uh, and they only used uh, beauty prep on her. So okay. which of the primers? So if you're, okay, so all skin types, now we can kind of get into the finish here. So all skin types can use the illuminating primer. The illuminating primer actually will give your skin more of a pearlescent look, right? If you are normal to dry, dehydrated, and you really just need that extra like dewiness to your skin or your skin just, just really like dehydrated, 
then go with the facial primer and brightener. That will be really comfortable for you, okay? Mm -hmm. Now with the mattifying primer, much to what Emma said, if you feel like your skin is dry, but you're in some place that has this crazy count, like humidity going on right now, and you still, you're kind of missing that, um, that kind of less shininess to your skin, you can absolutely use the mattifying primer. But if you're looking for something that's gonna hydrate your skin, that's gonna give you some dewiness, I would go with the facial primer and brightener. Mm -hmm. I think it's also, um, at least the way I look at the smooth and fair primers, it's kind of what you're looking for. And also mm -hmm. I, I, the way I look at it is less what skin type you have and more what finish you're looking for. So exactly. like if it's super humid outside and it's hot and I know I'm going to be walking around and I want my skin to look like it normally does, which is sort of a mm -hmm. satiny finish, then mm -hmm. I'm going to go with oily, even if I think my skin is normal to dry. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But in the winter, when I want my skin to look again, kind of more satiny, but it's mm -hmm. super dry, then I'm mm -hmm. going to use illuminating glow. So it's kind of up to you in terms of what look you want. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Two more questions. Okay. Colleen Littleton asked, um, oh, hang on. Okay. She's basically asking, can the contouring look encompass the kind of natural look uh, where it doesn't look like you have makeup on? Absolutely. You can. You, um, what you would do instead of using your fingers, you're going to use your brush because that's going to shear out the formula for you. Okay. So super, super. Yeah. And again, that's one, one thing, another thing that there's so many trends right now that's trending is that kind of that no makeup, makeup mm -hmm. look. So this is a great way to do that. What you can also do is you can put it on, you can do your contouring or your sculpting before you put your foundation on. So you would do your primer, then you would do your contour sculpting, and then you would put your foundation on and finish off however you see fit. And what that does, that creates a softness, it's called underpainting, that creates a softness that um, that's completely different than putting it on top of your makeup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've done that. Um... I've done that before. If I'm like nervous about if it, if I'm new to a product and I'm nervous mm -hmm. about it, I'll do it first and then I'll do foundation just to, just to be safe. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love underpainting. I, I incorporate that a lot. It's gorgeous. Um, I think underpainting, right? Underpainting. Yeah. Underpainting. Yes. Not, yes. It's, uh, it, it sounded a little bit like you said number painting, which is what. No, under, underpainting. I'm under sorry. Painting. That's okay. <laughs> no, we're not painting by numbers here. We're yeah. doing <laughs> Yes, underpainting. Yes. Underpainting. Right. Under your foundation. Yes. Um, okay, one last question from Stephanie. Um, they determined that GT11 is better, and I loved it. That's great. Okay. Um, but didn't give me any suggestions for concealer and under eye corrector. What colors would go best with GT11? So I would say um, Enlighten Plus in number four you could use or number th number number four would be the safest uh circle or circle delete three and what I would do is I would blend both shades together um to create to custom create your shade and then what was the, the last part did she say concealer and what else I'm just um I'm just writing this out for her so she can she can oh okay, it. okay. so uh you said enlighten plus and number four circle delete and number three yes right and with and the then, circle delete number three, she'll be able to customize it even yeah, more so than the shades. Enlighten Plus. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you get two shades there. Yeah. Uh, okay. So concealer and under eye corrector. Yes. I think but, we did it. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, we did it. Okay. I'm gonna um I'm gonna send this out, uh, Stephanie, so you can have that written out. Okay, I think that's it. I think we don't have any more questions and there's nothing in the chat. Okay, fantastic. I think we're good. All right. Well, let's end it with this lovely quote from this lovely lady. Makeup mm -hmm. should look good, feel good, and be good for the skin. Emma, thank you. Always a pleasure. I love tag teaming with you. Me I too. appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. And I hope um, I hope this was helpful for everyone and you kind of got all of your questions answered and everything was, you know, helpful. So yes. Oh, thank wait. you so much. Before we leave, there's couple in the, oh, the yes box. okay uh stephanie you are telling this to someone who wears makeup about 10 times a year that's okay my mom also wears makeup 10 times a year and she <laughs> loves she uses what does she use she uses enlighten but um you can you know and my stepmom does too she loves enlighten plus because when she gets on zoom meetings now you have to look at yourself and she'll put on a little bit of enlighten plus 
And then she feels like she looks awake. She's a new mom too. So I love it. I love it. And then we had another question that said, can concealer be used without foundation or over it? So I always suggest if you're going to do your concealer um, with the foundation, do your foundation first, concealer after. If you're just going to do a little bit of quick correction before you need to run to Zoom, just tap your concealer on really well, blend it, maybe throw on a little gloss and you're good to go. Yes. And I will often, um, cause I have pretty dark under eye circles. So I will often just use concealer under my, under my eyes and then, um, you know, do, do everything else from there. So yeah, trust me, do not let all this fool you as a makeup artist. There are some days where I'm like, Oh, nope, not going to happen today. <laughs> yes. Yep. All right. Thank you everyone for joining us. I really appreciate you. And we will see you at the next round at the next one. Yes. At the next round. And I forgot to mention what? Because you've all stayed this long and joined us, we are going to be randomly selecting one winner to win all of the new shades of the new blushes and new bronzers. So we will be emailing you from the email that you signed up with um, if you are selected. And thank you so much for joining. And we will be posting this video on YouTube if you want to go back and reference it. All right. Take care. Thanks, thank Emma. Thank you so much. I'll talk everyone. to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay,